Good morning. Oh, okay, anyway. Good morning, beautiful people. Hello, Springfield. I'm Rahim Mescalai, and this is 413 Sports Talk. Here we go. So today what I have for you are a couple stories in the NFL, uh, the rest of my mock draft to go over, um, a little section that I have set aside for uh, NFL free agency, and a look at the future. First, let's start off with some of this NFL news, which is um, a huge surprise to me because Pittsburgh Steelers and their tradition of, of all the stars they've had on their team and the longevity came into question. Uh, the general manager, Kevin Colbert, was um, speaking to the media about um, quarterback Ben Roethlisberger's uh, contract and um, what does that mean going, um, going uh, forward in the future. Um, Let's just break that down. Big Ben is owed $41.3 million this year. He's 39 years old. And um, not so much that the Steelers are rebuilding, but, you know, I can see where from a finances reason when they want to, they want, they have to get under cap by, by a certain month. Um, I can see why they would want him to restructure his deal. Um, I don't... Think his. I don't think the GM's comments should have been that. Uh, I don't know. Like I didn't. And I, I really. I didn't really agree with it. Honestly, Big Ben's won two rings. He's won countless playoff games. The Steelers won eleven in a row last year after uh, sputtering out and um, fading down the stretch, losing in the playoffs. We saw that. It was it was pretty embarrassing. Um, so I, I see I see from that standpoint where you you know you can like kind of like Dan well can what can we do to get over the hump what can we do to get in the conversation with uh, with the Chiefs and and um, the hierarchy of the AFC to uh, get into the playoffs um, but I really don't think you slight your franchise quarterback um, Big Ben can still throw it um, even at thirty nine he's been through many injuries. Um, so I don't think it's time for the Steelers brass to slight him just about yet. Um, but it looks like they're trying to. Um, uh, Big Ben was also quoted saying that he wouldn't mind restructuring his deal. And what he made last year as far as his salary didn't mean anything to him. Um, so it clearly seems like this guy's willing to restructure his deal to get something done. Um... And that's the thing with media nowadays and, you know, people going in and it's the end of the season and people's emotions are high and the GM to go out, you know, the GM, um, Kevin Colbert was coming, he was coming in hot, um, in my opinion. And you don't slight your franchise guy um, just because you think his price tag is too hefty. And um, it's your job to get that team under the salary cap. You know, I think that's highly unfair. And I had this escalated or developed into something bigger. Honestly, Big Ben would have been out the door and probably taken another franchise to the playoffs, probably to the Super Bowl. Um, so, And to put that into perspective, if you've been paying attention to anything, um, as far as the NFL offseason, you get, you would know that there are a lot of uh, a lot of teams that are quarterback needy. A lot of quarterbacks around the league whose futures are in question as well. So that would have been interesting. But I think um, Art, Art Rooney the second and uh, the Steelers management uh, got it together, and um, I think they're going to be okay. They're going to get under salary cap, and. Uh, possibly get the Steelers some help in the secondary. Um, think I think they were very good rush in the pass. T.J. Watt does his thing, um, but Dupree got hurt last year, which you know, which brought down the sacks and the defensive prowess. And I think that kind of that leaned on that team. That kind of was the uh, not the straw that broke the camel's back to say, but. You know, Bud Dupree being there and not being able, not they're not getting a lot of rushes at the quarterback. Um, kind of 
hurt them in the long run. There we go. So, good luck, to Big Ben. I hope they do not mess with your uh, contract. Hope you get your money, but um, or if they restructure it, I hope it uh, works out for you. So, moving on to picks number sixteen through thirty-two of the first round of my mock draft. Um, as you know, in my last episode, when I discussed the uh, first half of the first round, I had the Patriots. Uh, for any of you Patriots fans watching, I got you guys getting um, Ohio State's quarterback, Justin Fields. I think um, Bill Belichick is going to start rebuilding. I think last year um, screamed very loudly that you need a franchise guy. You need a guy to uh, grab the reins and get some wins going forward. I think Justin Fields fits the spot perfectly. Um, as long as Bill Belichick doesn't uh, move up and trade or, you know, does all that draft day magic that he does. But um, let's hope that it's some type of draft day magic. As you know, the Patriots took the GOAT, Tom Brady, 199th overall. And that's like the middle of nowhere as far as the draft's concerned. So with that being said, here's pick 16 through 32. The Arizona Cardinals at 16, I have them selecting South Carolina defensive back J.C. Horn. J.C. Horn is, as you may know, the son of former Saints all-pro wide receiver Joe Horn. He was a beast back in the day, and it was a shame uh, the Saints only had Aaron Brooks as a, as a quarterback. Um, had they ended up getting uh, Jake DeLome or um, somebody else like that, I believe that Saints team, too, would have been very lethal. So, I got J.C. Horn going to the Cardinals. Good luck good luck to you on your NFL career. Um, next, I got the Raiders at 17, taking Christian Barmore, another Alabama first-rounder. It's like a factory up there. Um, it's a great school. If you got a kid playing football, send him to Bama. It's, it's a factory. It's like everyone they throw out is a first-rounder. Uh, Jeremiah Kamaru, the linebacker, the freak linebacker from Notre Dame. I got him going 18th um, with the Dolphins' second pick in the first round. Um, I think, um, as I alluded to in my last show, I think that uh, the Dolphins are going to go with Devonta Smith out of um, Alabama, the uh, small wide receiver who literally shattered every record possible. Um, so I think with that second pick in the first round, they get a defensive guy. Um, cornerstones to start building a good franchise. I think um, the general manager and the other guys responsible for the inside moves um, with the Miami Dolphins are uh, they're, they're very smart. They've been making a lot of good moves and um, getting some extra picks. And I think in about 5-10 years it's, it's going to pay off. I think the Dolphins are going to be a franchise to be reckoned with. Just a prediction. Hey, Anyway, so going on to number 19th, we'll have Elijah Vera Tucker, the left guard out of USC, going to the Washington football team. This is um, filling many of holes that, that uh, the Washington football team has, and I think they're going to start on that offensive line. they got an okay squad to build around. So Elijah Vera Tucker right there at that, at that pick makes a lot of sense. Um, the 20th pick, the Bears. Oh, hmm. No comment on the Bears. Uh, they take Tevin Jenkins out of Oklahoma State. Uh, they need to protect whoever they're going to throw back their quarterback. Um, every couple of years is a different guy. Um, new system, new coach. It's the same revolving door. Um, it's the Bears. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of biased because, as you see, go, pack, go. So, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to trash the Bears at any, any chance I get. But I think they go with Tevin Jenkins here. Uh, 21 to the Colts. I think they get another. I think they get another um, Dwight Freeney-like player in Gregory Rousseau from Miami. He's crazy. If you've ever seen, if you've ever seen the Miami Hurricanes play this season, um, one thing that will, what one thing that's eye popping, especially on the defensive side of the ball, is the way that the line gets off the gets off the ball at the snap. It's crazy. The backfield is is, is filled with defenders. It seems in like two and three. Two and three seconds, that quarterback's on the floor. Um, I enjoyed watching that. Uh, and the, I watched I watched Miami play about like four times this year, and I watched I enjoyed um, watching that defensive line do what they did. So we've got Gregory Rousseau going here to the Colts, and he's not the only Miami defensive lineman I got going in the first round. So watch out for uh, for uh, what's to come. 
Uh, number 22, the Titans go with Zayvon Collins out of Tulsa. He's an athletic linebacker. Uh, I think that they need to pair with Landry and the others they have in that rotation. Um, and I think Mike Vrabel's got that group ready to go. And I think Zayvon Collins fits well with what Vrabel likes to do. Zayvon Collins is going to free up a lot of um, opportunities for other guys to be creative and get in there and blitz. So I watched the scheme to come alive this year, and I think Zayvon Collins is the key that's going to start the edge. Um, moving on to number 23, you got the New York Jets taking defensive end from Penn State, um, Jason Owe. Uh, this Penn State Lions uh, defense uh, filled with guys, filled with athletes um, that could go side to side. Um, uh, earlier... Um, in the NFL draft, I had the Denver Broncos taking Micah Parsons, and uh, he's a linebacker from Penn State who plays along with this guy, and um, they were all sideline to sideline defenders, guys running in the four threes, four fours, four five uh, yard, 40, 40 yard dash um, times. These guys are freaks. They're fast, and um, I can't wait to see what they're going to do at the NFL, at the NFL level. It's going to be awesome. Steelers at number 24, getting Chaz Surratt, another, another fast linebacker out of North Carolina. Uh, 25th, I got the Jaguars taking um, a defensive guy here to go along with um, Trevor Lawrence as the number one overall pick. Aziz Ajilari from uh, um, Georgia. A lot of people thought he would be uh, top 10 um, when the season started. Injuries and... Um, I think a lack. I think Georgia's lack of playing strong opponents kind of like brought his draft stock down a little bit, but um, we'll see. I think he's. I think he's really good, um, and he's just another. He's just one piece that the Jaguars can build with. Um, moving on, I got the run. I got the Browns at uh, twenty six taking Ronnie Perkins. He's a D tackle um, defensive end out of Oklahoma. Twenty uh, seventh got the Ravens taking an offensive lineman Jalen Mayfield. He's going to probably line up at um, at right tackle to protect Lamar Jackson, and um, I believe that's where he's going to go. Saints got them taking Tra Travon Morig, safety out of TCU. Number twenty ninth overall pick in the NFL draft. A go, a pack, a go. We take Greg Newsom out of Northwestern. Um, the guy's fast, and I think Kevin King got thoroughly embarrassed last year. Uh, I think that that call was rigged, per se, with um, my Packers against the Bucks. I think we should have been in the Super Bowl. But it is what it is. We need help in the secondary. We go with Greg Newsom right there. Nick Bolton um, is the 30th pick as the Bills grab another linebacker to go with that extraordinary defense. That extraordinary defense. Bills Mafia, baby. Yay, yay. Uh, Landon Dickerson, another Alabama product, is going to be grabbed by the Chiefs. And Drew Tryon from Washington. He's a defensive end slash linebacker who runs a 4 3 40. Going to the Tampa Bay Bucks. Here's the first round of the draft. It's interesting. The end of April. Can't wait to see it. Moving on to another spot in the NFL free agency. Um, you might be wondering what's going to happen um, besides for the draft. Uh, a lot of quarterbacks, as I've mentioned before, are going to be on the move. Um, and not just quarterbacks, a lot of other big names. So I've compiled a list of uh, my free agents to watch for. Um, number one, we got Dak Prescott, uh, the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Not sure what's going to happen there. Um... I hear some say that they're gonna, the Cowboys are gonna throw another franchise tag on to Dak and um, try to make a deal going forward um, at some point this season. Um, I've heard trade rumors. Um, honestly, I think Jerry Jones just needs to pay them in, uh, give Dak his money. Though he did suffer a very gruesome, gruesome. Go back on YouTube and watch that. Uh, that knee injury last year. Ooh. Oh, man. Um, he, he suffered a very bad injury, knee injury. So I understand the, uh, you know, the, oh, my God, do we give this guy a bunch of money and he blows out his other knee in such vicious fashion? I understand that. Or does he get, acquire another injury, you know what I mean? And then Jerry's looking at, like, damn, there's my investment sitting on the bench, and 
here I go, I finally pay this guy, and <laughs> the injury bug bites him. Which won't, um, per- it's not predominantly Dak's fault, but, you know, I could see where uh, Jerry Jones is leaning with that. Uh, we got Von Miller, uh, the linebacker out of um, the Denver Broncos. If he doesn't get things together with his contract, he goes elsewhere. Um, where? Who knows? But uh, Von Miller could be on the on the move. AJ Green, the wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals, whose voices his um, his want to be traded or dealt in some way. Um, Matt Judon, outside linebacker from the Baltimore Ravens, a huge name on this free agent list. James Justin Watt, who's a favorite to get JJ Watt. Yeah, my Packers. We're one of the one of the favorites to uh, to land JJ Watt. I really hope so. I think uh, a player like that um, puts us over the hump. Um, I've also heard that he could go to the Browns or possibly to the Steelers. Um, oof! If he paired up with his brothers in Pittsburgh, that'd be something. Especially TJ. Him on TJ on the on on the defense. Oh my God. I feel bad for any any offense going against them. Uh, Leonard Williams, defensive end from the Giants, who was traded in the middle of uh, of that uh, that that weird season last year. Who was traded um, in the middle of it and um, actually came on for the Giants down the stretch. So I really hope that they would resign him. Um, I see him leaving though. I think the Giants have other needs that they could that they could meet um, in the free agency. So I think Leonard Williams goes. Uh, Kawan Short, defensive tackle for Carolina. I don't think he is going to get picked up only because of his age um, and the dip in production he had last year. Uh, Kawan Short is 32 going into this NFL season. And on a bad contract, um, in a season in which he didn't get injured uh, and, his, and his production just dipped, it was kind of, um, I don't know. I think he's going to go bye-bye. Uh, another guy who's going to go bye-bye but get picked up quick, um, former uh, Los Angeles Chargers outside linebacker Melvin Ingram. This guy's a freak. Side-to-sideline defender. Um, the problem with him is that he's injured a lot. Um, but when he's on the field, he's a beast. Um, so Melvin Ingram, I think someone's going to think someone's gonna grab him. Uh, another guy who kind of plays like a hybrid position, um, uh, outside linebacker, safety type guy, uh, Bud Dupree from the Pittsburgh Steelers could potentially be a free agent if, if that contract isn't um, isn't restructured, uh, if he's not re-signed. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what the Steelers do. Um, we got a couple couple guys that uh, I think are going to go if certain contracts aren't restructured and things aren't sorted out there. So. Let's hope. I mean, Bud Dupree is one of the best defenders um, in this league. But anyway, moving on uh, to to a uh, Super Bowl champion, Shaq Barrett, out of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, I've had I've heard two things about him. Um, I've heard one, he's willing to stay. I know I know certain guys on the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers are are uh, willing to restructure to keep that group intact. But Shaq Barrett has has made a little less than $30 million in his career. I think somebody throws him $100 million. Um, I think he's gone. And I don't blame him. You know, I know they want to keep that team together. Um, That defense played phenomenal, especially down the stretch. But I think someone throws throws a a three-figure contract like that at him. I think he's a bye-bye. Bye-bye, Shaq Barrett. Um... Hopefully so. I'm a Packers fan. We need uh need to worry about I want all those defenders to go to the AFC. So uh Brandon Schriff, a guard from the Washington football team. Um Jacoby Brissett, who was a former backup for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh former Patriots right guard Joe Thune. Uh, I believe he will get picked up rather fast. I think he still has a lot in the tank. Although he is 33 years old, and he's uh, suffered injuries the last few years. Um, uh, Patrick Peterson, uh, quarterback, legendary quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals. Um, 
I see him going somewhere if they well potentially I don't know they he he could he could he could do a tender they could they could resign him I don't think I don't think so and then especially um I have them gar- drafting um JC Horn the cornerback out of South Carolina so I think um I think that's that's has uh Patrick Peterson's future set in stone um, all, last at the bottom of this list, I have Allen Robinson, wide receiver for the Chicago Bears. Again, Packers fan. Bears. Um, Allen Robinson had an extraordinary year for such a, uh, a, a team that's, that's just such a head scratcher. It's like they play for three of ten, three of ten plays are extraordinary, and then just the next set, there's, they did three good ones, and then there's seven, they're just horrible. Uh, I, I've never understood them, but I'm a Packers fan. I'm used to having a, a champion all-pro quarterback whoop the Bears twice a year, so it's nothing for me. Two other honorable mentions on this list. Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, he is an all-pro. He's going, he's going to be um, inducted into the Hall of Fame, and I think he's one of those guys that you know, that stays with the team forever. I still think he's going to go elsewhere. Just maybe for like a year or two. Try to get a ring. Um, he deserves it. Um, he's one of the best wide receivers that have uh, ever touched a football. And um, I, I personally want to say it was an honor watching his career. Um, I think it's a travesty that an offense had Anquan Bolden and Larry Fitzgerald um, on the same sideline and um, not a playoff game or, or a Super Bowl ring was obtained. Uh, that's horrible. Um, even when they had Kurt Warner, Edrin James, there was still, I don't know, still in a ring. So that is a travesty. It's a crime. One of the biggest robberies in football. What else do I have for you beautiful people? Alright. Now I would like to take this time uh, to have a moment of silence. Um, As you may have known, a couple weeks ago, Vincent Jackson, um, January 14th, 1983 to February 15th, 2021, uh, passed away in a Florida hotel in... um, he was drafted in 2005 by the then San Diego Chargers um, out of Northern Colorado. Um, Vincent Jackson was a three-time Pro Bowler with 540 catches, 9,080 yards, and 57 touchdowns in 155 career games. I I mostly saw him as a teenager, and um, so I was wowed by his ability to go up there. Um, reminded me a lot of Randy Moss, and I really enjoyed Vincent Jackson making catches. Um, I enjoyed the catches he made against the Patriots that one year that that uh, the Chargers were able to go past New England in the playoffs. So, Vincent Jackson, um, I'm gonna do a little moment of silence for you. Rest in peace. Anyway, this just about concludes episode 5 of 413 St- Sports Talk. Looking forward, I still have a plethora of interviews that are ready to be filmed. Um, next week, I am going to Dave & Buster's with the winner of our first contest, Ryan Jones. Um, this is going to be fun because it's food. Um, it's food and uh, drinks if you want it. Um, but more importantly, the competition, I'm going to whoop his ass in all these games. And then, uh, we'll, I'll, uh, we're going to have a little shootout on those basketball, that, those basketball games in there. I'm going to crush them in. So, and, and uh, I'm going to th- put 50 bucks on it. Um, so if he beats me, he's going to get an additional 50 bucks, um, as well as this entire Dave and Buster's fiasco financed by 413 Sports Talk. So look forward to that. That's going to get shot next week. Um, 
I am formulating another contest. Got a bunch of um, merchandise coming in this week. I'm going to give away all that. Um, I am also planning a little uh, thing I'm calling Restaurant Week. Um, we plan to go to a lot of the new um, businesses in Springfield, Mass. Um, first and foremost, the black and brown businesses. Um, and, uh, you know, sit down and maybe um, uh, shoot one of my episodes in there. Um, taste some of the food, see, what's, see uh, what some of the restaurants have to offer. Um, and just, you know, um, engage with everyone um, from that perspective. So we've got our restaurant week slash business week coming up. A um, bunch of interviews and 413 Sports Talk getting an official home. Uh, and that is to happen by mid-March. So a lot of good stuff coming up. I love all of you beautiful people. Thank you so much for your support. Um, if there's anybody that needs me for anything, uh, the support that you've given me has been enough for me to be in gratitude to you for some time. So if there's anybody that needs me for anything, um, feel free to, to um, jump in the inbox. Um, I love all you beautiful people. I hope... Nothing but success and well for everyone. Um, to all the student athletes out there, I can't wait to get you on my show. Can't wait to interview you, maybe race you, uh, do a little competition with something, um, and highlight what you do, what you've done, the sports you love. Highlight your school, and um, I love to work. Uh, and all of the businesses, um, all the artists, all the creatives. Everybody in Springfield, I love you all. I wish you all success. And I look forward to work with all of you in some fashion, in some way, shape, or form. So, I am Rahim. This is 413 Sports Talk. And I'm out. Love you all. Have a great day.